Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I want to talk a little bit more about why I switched to Linux to begin with. I realize there's a lot more people on this channel than there were when I first started, and I haven't talked about the reasons why I switched to Linux initially for quite a while. And so just crossing over uh, 50,000 subscribers earlier this month, it's certainly worth bearing um, uh, bearing in mind the reasons I wanted to switch over to Linux to begin with. I was way back in that day. I was a very happy just web designer guy. Give me my Microsoft. Give me my Adobe. Give me the, the software that I need. I'll build up little things. And, you know, I even scrounged together a little Mac mini to test things on Mac as well. Woohoo! I can test things on multiple stuff. I got an iPhone, an Android phone. Just go ahead and give everything the quick test. So what happened? Happened that caused me to say, well, let's abandon this Windowsiness. Why didn't I jump over to Mac too? Well, first we have to see that the progression happened that our devices stopped being our devices. This is the power of Linux, is that for the most part, our devices are still our devices. And that is really the key principal reason why I switched to Linux. When I first got into computing years back, and I remember, you know, Windows 95 and Windows 98 and theme managers and all these things, and I could build my own mouse cursors and sounds and colors and, and themes and all these things, I had a great time with my computer. One thing I have always hated is clutter, and I could go in on that old up to uh, up to about Windows XP. You could go in and edit that start menu and have the programs exactly where you want them to be, and you could streamline everything. And again, your computer is your computer, and it was just so gloriously yours. And we started to lose track of that. We lost the ability to control some of it as we progressed into Vista and Windows 7, although we still maintain most of it. But right about the time they started rolling out Windows 8 and Windows 8.1, there were some things that we started to lose control. One of those that I saw is the sheer disorganization of the application menus. Oh, lordy. It's like, do I really need a shortcut to the help document to the program? And sure, you can get in with PowerShell and remove some of these types of things, but the point of the matter is oftentimes you can't. We start to lose more control. I first saw Windows 8.0 had, it was called at the time, SkyDrive. Now it's called OneDrive. Microsoft has always had an issue with <laughs> their, uh, their branding. So they had their SkyDrive, and then in Windows 8, I see this, like, what is this? A network-connected drive? Hell no. <laughs> delete that thing. Windows 8.1 shows up. <laughs> you cannot delete me. <laughs> and they started to take control of my computer in places. I did not want my Windows 8.1 computer to have some SkyDrive perpetually connected to their network fair shares. I am never going to use this in the history of computing, no matter what. Let me delete it. Nope. No, bro. No, bro, not happening. And so I started to kind of get frustrated. And then I started to see the things coming out about Windows 10. We're going to automatically update. We're going to send back telemetry. We're like, hell no. I do not need my system going back and updating itself automatically. So I jumped ship from Windows. And uh, now the vastest majority of my workflow is all in Linux. Why did I switch to Mac? Simply because I hate Mac's UI. The one thing that I had when I first switched over to Linux is I was using Ubuntu at the time, and it's like, I could deal with the UI, but it, I wasn't in love with it. I was looking for ways to put the panels and stuff on the bottom. Like, you know, how can I get my computer set up like the old Windows? And that's when I found Linux Mint Cinnamon. I'm like, this is exactly what I want. And so that's really why Linux Mint Cinnamon became my chief go-to distribution. It doesn't roll a lot. It doesn't change a lot. And uh, it has the UI that's exactly what I want. And, and to be fair to other Linux distributions, I tried out all of the other UIs and I just keep going back to that Cinnamon layout or Plasma or XFC or Mate. I, I just like Cinnamon better of all of those. And so that's really why I switched to Linux to begin with. I got off of Windows because they started to behave like my computer was not my computer. This is why I'm not a huge fan of the smartphones. They're your device that you just paid thousands of dollars for belongs to somebody else. They can do with it what they want, whenever they want. That is a problematic thing to me. I bought the device with my own money. I want to be able to control it. If I break it, that's on me. That's not on you. 
So why is this important? Well, one of the things that is cool about Linux in the Linux world is the developers will listen to the average guys online. Eh, maybe not the guys with a, you know, a, a subscriber or two, but you know, I've done a lot of videos over the years and I have highlighted a lot of very positive points and a lot of very negative points. And I've had my fair share of battles and spats and I've had my fair share of camaraderie over some points. There's some developers who have taken the feedback and criticism and, and, tried to insult me in the background. <laughs> Screw you then, I just won't look at it. But then there's other developers that listen to the criticism and go, yeah, some of those points were very good. Let's go ahead and implement those. And other points, eh, we'll leave those on the table. But at least they're like, hey, we appreciate the review one way or the other. <laughs> one of the best reviews, I think, was external OS. I'm like, this is worse than Windows, right? And uh, the developer loved that review. It was uh, it was a very ratioed video. Um, I was indeed doing a lot of, uh, a lot of fun with that. It just kind of happened spontaneously. It was still one of the top videos on the channel and the developer loved that video and it was so fun then i had other uh, another distribution where i gave a very honest feedback i had a lot of good positive stuff i had a few criticisms and the developer tried to call me stupid and all sorts of other junk janky stuff i'm like yeah go mature yourself up a little bit i actually blocked the dude from my channel because like all right you're just a moron at this point and so that's the you know the type of stuff but the reason i point this out let's look at zorin zorin came out and started doing some data tracking which myself and a few other people have called them out on it and they went back and put an opt out in their system. So in their installer, and that's really good. The fact that the developers Linux will listen, that is why I stay with Linux. This is what makes it so powerful of a distribution uh, or as, as, a, as an operating system as a whole, because there's certainly going to be some things like Ubuntu is not going to listen to a lot of the, the guys like me on here, um, but other distributions will. And the reason I bring this up, why do I have such an aversion to snap packages if you've seen some of that? Well, the reason I have such an aversion to snap packages specifically is because they automatically update. They don't let me have as much control. There's more control on snaps than you have on Windows. You can hold some things back. You can run um, an older version, a newer version, but you're fairly limited. And by default, they will automatically push everything through without really your consent. And I have a problem with that. I don't want anything on my system to change without me knowing about it. That is why I like Linux, and but why I don't like things like snap packages that, that they just update themselves. Flat packs, some of them do update themselves. I like flat packs a little bit better, but at the same time, they both have that fundamental problem. App images, hey, they don't change at all, and I have to go and manually intervene, and somebody like, oh, that's hard, uh. Like, no, you gotta pick a time to do your basic computer maintenance. Pick a time. If you're not picking a time to manually update your app images, you're probably also not picking a time to take your computer backups and verify you actually have them. So if catastrophe occurs, you have your computer system back. Back. So I want to talk just briefly here uh, on, uh, once again, I think I did bring this up in the past, but uh, it's worth clarification. Again, Linux Mint released in their latest um, uh, their latest monthly report. They actually had a little bit here as well about, uh, about updates and, and things like that. And so what they wrote here is they're talking about applying updates. Now, the blog post before this, they talked quite a bit about uh, the importance of updating your computer and, and for security and things. And they say over here, they're looking for improvements in the update manager that will remind you that there are some things that probably should seriously be updated. I'm not a huge fan of all the nagging stuff. And according to, if you read through the comment threads and all these things, Clem does say that, yes, you can disable all this nonsense, but they're putting it in here by default just to remind you, hey, this isn't just a, some little, little thing. This could be a serious bug fix. But ultimately, what I like about Linux Mint is their fundamental point is that they still see your computer as yours. We have here key principles at Linux Mint. One of them is that your computer is your computer, not ours. We also have many use cases in mind. We don't want to make Linux Mint harder to use for any of these cases. Like me, I don't update this production computer, but maybe once every six months. Why? 
because I don't want anything to change in the middle of doing videos for multiple channels at the same time. I don't need some catastrophic thing happen in the middle of a tight week and deadlines when I don't have time to resolve stuff. Let me choose when I'm updating things and don't pester me about it. In fact, I'm actually surprised I have Mint Update Manager on at all. Some of my computers, I disable it by default. <laughs> like, okay, well, this is the time we're gonna run updates. And if there's something serious and critical, I will push those updates earlier. That's for sure. But that's really why I switched to Linux. And what I like about Linux, particularly Linux Mint, they recognize that my computer is my computer, not your computer. Windows stopped doing this. Mac stopped doing this. They want to be like, we know better than you. We are your big brother and big brother is watching. I don't want Big Brother watching. I want to be able to control my system. And if I happen to have an error, then that would be on me, not on you. I'm not going to go complain to Microsoft when something I did my computer breaks the computer. But I have no qualms about complaining when Microsoft introduces an update that updated itself automatically that introduced a blue screen of death. That, sir and ma'am, uh, probably more sirs than ma'ams based on my channel analytics, is why I switched to Linux. It's about having control of my computer. It's about my own privacy. It's about how I want to run my systems. That is why I switched to Linux. Let me know in the comments down below, why did you switch to Linux as well? Thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.